party always goes in the anvil this way. Because you want the piece to shoot that way. If it shoots, you never put the hardy this way. Because you don't want to hurt any spectators. Yeah. Because when it cuts, it's going to shoot the piece that way. Oh. Ancient Chinese secret. No, no, no. It came out good. Somebody steals my hardy, I make another one. That's all. No big. This is one I did, right? Yep. You got a little bit of fish mouth there, which you're gonna have to flatten out. Okay. Otherwise, the scales won't fit on it perfectly. Mm -hmm. See, mine don't have any fish mouth. Right. It's just totally flat. See what I mean? Yeah. You live in your learn. Yeah. It ain't bad. I'm gonna cut this diagonally so that I got a point on this one, I got a point on this one, it's starting off. All right. Normally when you cut something, you cut it straight across like this. You know, everything perpendicular, but because we're trying to cheat a little, put a point on both knives, we're gonna cut it this way. All right. You ready? Ready. Watch this. It's gonna wet the edges of the fire. The fire's too big. Never wet the middle of the fire because you could crack the fire pot. Uh, okay. It's cast iron. Ah. It don't have to be too hot to cut it. Okay. Because you're hitting downward. Okay? Mm-hmm. What was that one made from like another sledge? What? Tip? That hardy. That's just a piece of high carbon steel. That was it, huh? Wow. Yeah. First of all, it's a shank. I didn't, I hadn't finished it. But when somebody stole my hardy, I figure, might as well make another one. <laughs> Kill that. Killing. Thank you. You put it right in the middle. And you give it a good whack to score it. Good. Cutting good. A little more. I want to hear it a little more. Kill it. It's thin already because it's been thin because I'm chiseling through it. Okay? Mm -hmm. That should be enough. You find the groove. That's good. Now, what I'm going to do is cool it right at the cut. Just for a second. I'm going to snap this off. There it goes. Now when you're done cutting, you take this out of the hardy hole. Because this will cut your fingers off if you leave it in there. Right. Okay? Yeah. Don't touch that. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's hot. Very hot. Now we got the makings of a point already. Mm -hmm. So what we gotta do is forge that to a longer point. Which I'm gonna do on this one. You're gonna do the other one. Alright. Alright? Turn the fire. See how by cutting it diagonally you start the point a little? Mm-hmm. But normally you cut straight. Okay. And that's how they used to cut steel back in the day. 
Wow. They didn't have uh, acetylene torches until about 1905. <laughs> well, abrasive chop torches, you know? Just then they cut, they come with hard. Yeah, keep it level in the fire because you don't want to burn the point off because mm -hmm. it's high carbon steel. See, I got it level. I don't ever plunge down into the fire like most guys do. They burn the point where it breaks off later and they wonder why. Kill the fire. Here's where time manipulation is important too. You have to hold it good. Right to a point. Okay. Go up again. Wait until you see the trick of the reverse curving it, you know, the counter curving it. That's the real trick to this. Good. Kill that. It's not gonna take long to get hot. Now I don't want any fish mouth, so I keep flattening as I do this. Oops. That never happens. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I normally don't drop my tongs. See, no fish mouthing. And I'm coming to a point. almost to a point. Mm -hmm. One more heat. Good. Now I'm going to bend this in the wrong direction. See that when I hammer this edge, and I hammer that edge, it'll come back straight again. Huh. I'm going to show you how to counter curve. You start off near the tank, counter curve Okay. With the knife making, because the edges are thin, you don't want to burn it. So you take your time, you, you slowly eat it. Because once you burn it, you got nothing. Right. And you wasted all that effort. I'm holding this with your life. I'm curving it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Gonna have to do it a little more. Because it's gonna come back with a vengeance. So I have to heat it again. It's gentle. But you're gonna, I'm banana, turning into a banana in the wrong direction. Okay. Because while you're working, if you didn't banana, it would end up banana anyway. Right, kill that. It just does that naturally as you're working it? Because you're working one side only. Because you're working only one side, you know, the bevels. Because it's a one edge bowie, uh -huh. it's going to curve on you. Yeah, that's good. Straighten it again this way. See it curving? I'm going to curve it even a little more. 
Okay. Just a hammer. You want to start off with it straight, that way, good. Now, watch it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer it here and here, and it's going to straighten the knife right out, because I'm only hammering the one side. Okay. Okay? All right. I'm hammering at an angle. See it straighten? Yep. Now I'm going to turn it the other way and hammer that side. And it's going to straighten right out. Good. Let me heat it up again. It's almost straight already. You see that? Yeah. And it's got bevels now. Now if you hammer the bevels carefully, you don't... I'm being very careful about the, the, the angle of my hammer is coming down. Because I want to forge a perfectly level bevel. You know, at the same angle, up and down the knife. So you're holding the blade flat on the anvil and angling the hammer. Exactly. It's almost done. The trick is in guessing how much to curve it the other way right. before you hammer the bevels. One Bowie knife. <laughs> like, that? Yeah, like that? I like that. Good. Now you do it. Look at the bevel. You can see the line going all the yeah, way up, a straight yeah. line. Because I did it carefully. On this side also, the line goes right up there. 